You did good. You can leave the rest to us. Yeah, I know this is what we paid you to do, but I know it must have been really hard to find her. We've searched many caves, but she seems to move around a lot. It's like she never wanted to get caught. But it is inevitable that she would. Crime and punishment? One can't exist without the other. If it did, it'd be absolutely unjust. A crime must have a punishment. And the punishment must fit the crime. There's no two ways about it. <laughs> but I'll have more time to ramble later. Here, let me pour you some tea. And there we are. I guess you're wondering what exactly Sypha has to do with all this. What importance she has. Well, I don't really think that there's a way I can make it short, so just hold on to your innards, okay? Aw oh, man, where do I begin? Um, see, Sypha was actually around before me. She was a Lamia since before I was born. There's this, a magic. It's something like transfiguration or something. Now it's banned because of the usage being abused. <sighs> Sypha was once a colleague of our organization. A long time ago, actually. Actually, in my great-grandmother to grandmother's time. She was one of the strongest ones we knew. She was a very powerful warrior. She, she had a nose like a bloodhound, and she knew her way around a knife. <laughs> Those probably susceptible to bullets, and fire, and ice. Anything that can hurt a snake. <laughs> but, you know. Where was I? Uh, oh, yes. She was powerful. In fact, I think she'll, she's going to go down as one of the strongest members of this whole thing. But then... <sighs> the story goes that... Well... Sypha was on a mission all on her own. She went to fight something. I think it was some kind of lich? Or just something really dark and unnatural. And she... Well, let me just say this. Liches are basically... They're like the origin of, like, necromancy. That's where they, it comes from. It's said that necromancy is a curse from the Lich, and anyone who knows the art will never know a normal life, one that's filled with sorrow and death. I can't imagine living a life like that. It'd just be terrible. Anyway, she went and... I don't really know the full story. As I said, there's different tellings of it. But... Something happened to Sypha when she was slaying that thing. When she did, she came back and she was just not the same. From what... My grandmother understood, she... She would be up at night and just walk around. And you just see her just standing around or staring at something. She was almost like a cat. It was so creepy, but nobody really knew what was going on. They tried to find some way to help. Even got one of the Shinto priests to come and talk to her. But then... With her bare hands, she just 
took him down in one swing. I'm guessing you're knowing where this is going, so... This just continued. Anyone who tried to help Saifa would... She just slowly went off the rails. She was spiraling deeper and deeper and deeper into madness. Whatever the Lich did to her, it wasn't like anything we'd ever seen. And by the end of it, Saifa wasn't herself anymore. And do you know what hurts the most? Her comrades, everyone that she knew in this place, they took an oath that they would protect each other. And that didn't fade away even as she went down that path. But in the end, they couldn't save her. But by the end of it, pity turned to anger because she just couldn't stop. And by the end of it, that was the day my grandmother died. Now she's Saifa. She and Saifa were best friends. Saifa, when she was finally, she was at the end of her tether and I'm talking like this because it's just, the story is slowly coming to me. It's slowly making sense. Like, something's helping me fill out the blanks. <clears throat> that by the time my grandmother finally said that she could help, and... She... But then, Saifa did something, and... And Grandma... She couldn't stand it anymore. She called her a monster. And she said that she wished that she never knew her. And that was the first time that Saifa actually did something so terrible. With her bare hands, she... <laughs> Sorry. She ripped her open limb from limb and and ate her alive. Oh my gosh. This is sorry, I'm just oh my gosh, I'm just making myself sick. Let me just I need to sit down. Ugh. I'm sorry if I'm worrying you. Anyway. That was the final straw. Saifa was brought before our leaders and the people of the village. And they decided that her punishment, she would no longer be human. She would be a long lived monster. And she'd be cursed to live in exile in this way. If you don't really know how that kind of thing goes, when you're something else, when you are born human but you're not human anymore, you, you're you solely like a fish out of water. You don't understand anymore what you are or what you're supposed to be. You don't know who you are. And you're asking that every time you look at yourself in that body. Your identity is slowly becoming lost in translation until all you can remember is your name. It's a terrible fate. And it was cruelty. Especially given that Saifa did all that. If we could go back and do it all again, I'm certain we'd make the correct choices. But, 
that's not what we're doing anymore. We can't look back with regret. And we'll decide what to do with Saifa now that she's here. She's lived for how long? And she's just... I'm willing to bet she's tired. She's tired of living. Tired of the boredom, the sadness, the the need to taste her flesh. She could bear it no more. I'm certain of that. But it makes me wonder. The body's in the cave where we found you. Well, near where we found you, anyway. They looked... They looked fresher. Was she planning on eating them? Hmm. You don't know. Don't worry about it. It's alright. It's all good. What exactly did she say to you while you were there? What did she do? <laughs> so, she was playing with you. That doesn't make sense. Lamia's, especially of her genus, they're, they're either very calm, peaceful creatures, or they're just... They're vile and aggressive. She can't be the former. Especially given how, where she came from. Which means she's... She's still human in there. After all this time, maybe Saifa's still human. There's some bit of her in there. She's still waiting for salvation. But transfiguration can't be undone. At least not easily. If I knew how to change her back into a human, I would have done that. And then we would have decided what to do. But right now, we don't know what to do. All we can do is sit on her until we know. Until someone comes that can help us. But chances are she's not going to live to see the next day. Huh? Ah. Go ahead and follow Hikaru. She's... Saifa wants to see you. I just hope she doesn't do anything bad. Just be careful, okay? We'll be waiting. Yeah, we know we can take you can take care of yourself. Don't rub it in. So, you're here. What did you bring? <laughs> you have a smell. It's so vile. I almost don't recognize you. You usually smell so good. But now... What is that? <laughs> I guess that means we're at the crossroads, as you humans say. The time has come to see what happens. No, I'm not going to do anything wrong. I don't feel like doing anything when I'm in a cage. I prefer being free. Doing as I please without anyone telling me how I should be or what I should do. You humans are good at this sort of thing. I guess you're good for something.
Yes, I'm aware. I've heard of what they plan to do. And what they're probably going to do. Frankly, it doesn't matter to me anymore. I just want to have fun. I'd just like to play until I die. But how long will that be? Let me tell you. You're quite possibly the most funny human I've ever had. I do believe that you feel the same. That the world we live in holds no meaning. At least if we don't have each other. <laughs> My adorable plaything. I could never get bored of you. You're getting faster at running. You get faster and you're better at hiding. I have to say, I'm impressed. Not only did you run far, but you also managed to bring them in to trap me. <laughs> but thinking on it more, I don't both know whether I should be impressed or disappointed. I suppose that both is a good place to start. I'm impressed because you've actually managed to outsmart me. But I'm disappointed because if I die, I won't be able to play with you anymore. And where's the fun in being dead when you're likely not even promised a wandering? I want to play forever with you. As I said, you're more fun than any other human I've ever had. And I can always smell that scent when you're scared. I think that you miss me. And I miss you too. How about we do just that? Why don't you let me out and we can play together once again? Me leaving you alone in this world, that would mean that I don't get to play. And you won't have me. You won't have the only person that can appreciate you. The only person that can love you like I do. That will never forsake you. You know what they did to me. Who's to say they won't do it to you too? Who's to say you can trust them? I don't believe that you can. So why are you wasting your time? I just don't understand you. But then, I've long forgotten what it's like to be human. <laughs> Maybe if they manage to. But will our playtime be the same if I have my human legs back? Though, I've always wondered what you would look like with a cut right along that handsome face. Not deep enough to leave scars but just enough to know that I've marked something. 
I wonder if you're into pain like I am. I wonder what the other side of your eyes look like. I'm wondering if we can take it further. Having you so close to the edge of death, but not there yet. It's such an exhilarating thought. What do you think? <laughs> you continue to amuse me. I suppose if these are my final days in this world, my only regret is not playing with you more. I would do anything to know just what would be different if certain things were a certain way. If we could have met while I were human, would playtime be as fun? Thinking on it more, I think that I like you better when I can outrun you with this tail. <laughs> Though, perhaps reminiscing won't do me any good now. <laughs> I guess whatever I'll have to say can wait. What I'm meaning to say, in a sort of roundabout way, I'll miss you, human. My one true friend, and the only human that I will ever love. Perhaps when we are reborn, if we both die, that in our next life, we can always play together. And then maybe we can be together forever. That's the sort of future I would want. Seeing your face turn blue and seeing your red blood drip down <laughs> oh, I love your face right now. That mixture of... of... Ow! That look of you not knowing whether you love me or hate me. That's the sort of face that I think I like on you. However... I think that I like your scared face even better. <laughs> Would you look at that? I think they're coming. <laughs> I suppose this is farewell. My beloved scared human.